I just want to show the difference between two, like what a mix, a properly mixed one looks like. It's like clear, right? It's going to have a little bit of bubbles, but when you pour it, depending on how thick the project is, surface bubbles can be taken out with um, a small little torch. And then this one, if you can tell, I don't have a stick in it because I haven't mixed it yet, but there's two different viscosities in it. Um, when you start mixing it, let me show you, when you start to mix it, it begins to get cloudy. You can kind of see on the top there, I don't want to pour it out, but, and then you can see the two different kind of, um, patterns here and textures. So you literally have to stir it until, again, it becomes clear like this. And then eventually while you let it sit, um, some of the bubbles will start to surface as well. If you want to speed up the process, you can also um, let it sit in a small bowl of warm water and that'll bring the bubbles to surface. But just wanted to show that that's one process. I still have two more cups to um, stir here and then I'm going to start demonstrating my pour patterns. Okay, so I've got three cups here. Um, this is the first one that I mix, and as you can tell, some of the a majority of the bubbles went to surface. It's nice and crystal clear. This is the second one. It's still kind of floating some of these bubbles up to the surface. And then the third one, of course, is going to have the most bubbles because I literally just finished stirring it. Um, what I am going to do is work on Miami Dolphins coaster set and matching wine um, caddy. And this is not the actual sticker or anything. I'm using this more for reference for colors. Um, I've picked out the colors that I would like to use. Um, this dolphin is like a teal gray, and I have to, you know, kind of mix colors in order to see um, what it would be. So I'm going with these three colors right now. Once I mix them, it's going to look a, a little different. So since the first two cups are already mixed, I'm going to let that third one sit over there. Um, the third one, truth be told, is just clear because right now the, the main colors that we have are the teal and the orange. So we're going to try to get the, those colors and then the clear helps with separation and blending. So um, I already have the stirs in there. I'm going to use these little tiny sticks here that I have um, to just go ahead and add color. Now, usually the more pigment that you use, you can see that's all I have on here is little like, I don't know, pea size. I'm going to add two just because the the cup amount that I have. Um, what I should do is take out maybe another orange just in case I feel like it's not exactly the orange that I'm going to like, but I think it might be. You just have to really stir it so the consistency goes all the way through. Because if you don't, you can kind of see how it just like sits without being there. So you have to literally like scoop it through and make it go to the bottom. Um, so now that I'm seeing the transparency, I think it's safe to say that I probably can go ahead and put some more orange in there just to make that color a little bit more vibrant and stand out more. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And because I, as much as I do believe that matches the color, I'm going to add a little bit of a brighter orange to this. Just so like that. This is still the same one, but I'm just going to add a little bit more of it. And then I'm going to go in my collection over here and grab another orange that I feel like would be a little bit more vibrant. This is orange. <laughs> but I didn't want it to be that super crazy vibrant because the stickers and colors that I'm using are a little bit more on the like calm side, I, I suppose. I'm going to take the same amount maybe two two scoops of that on this and go ahead and add that and I usually keep the colors out just in case I want to add more um, now the pigments in the resin 
actually create a vibrancy, a different kind of texture to the finished product. Like you, I, I mean, like technically, if I really wanted to, um, we could do this with alcohol inks, acrylic um, paint. Uh, the acrylic paint creates more of a solid color, but the only thing is you have to be careful with the acrylic paint and how much you actually use because it makes the actual resin a little bit harder to um, cure or solidify. It actually stays bendy. Um, and I've, I've learned that the hard way. Same thing with alcohol inks. If you use too much alcohol inks, um, that can actually create the, the resin not to dry all the way. And if you touch in certain places that you leave drip marks, you most likely will feel like alcohol. So you have to be careful with the consistency. Oh, it's always better to add more because you can't take out, you know? So I just want to bring this a little closer to the camera. And I think we found the orange that I want to use. That the two scoops of the little orange that I put in there definitely made that work. So this is the orange that we're going to go with. So now that that's stirred in there, oh, I think I just moved the camera. Hopefully we're still good. Um, now that we're stirred in there, I'm going to go ahead and move that off to the side. Always be careful with the resin. <laughs> um, now, now that I think we have the colors, I'm going to put those off to the side. And now this is like a beautiful sea blue, but it's not teal, you know? So we're going to do... Again, two tiny scoops of that. And I'm going to tone it down just a little bit with this like sea blue. Maybe like a, it's more like a sky blue actually. I'm not, who am I kidding? Um, maybe like a one scoop onto the two. And then we're going to just see how these colors turn out. This is pretty cool. I don't, I don't know if it, it's in the camera view. But like if you pour the resin on it. <laughs> anyway. So we're just going to go ahead and mix this. Now it's already on the more bluish side and we need it to be on the more teal side. This kind of has a little gray to it, the dolphin. I'm trying, I don't want it to be like too like spot on. So as we're mixing this, it's very, very blue. So I think what I'm going to do, although this is kind of kind of there. I'm going to add just a hint of charcoal. Bear with me. Silver gray. Now this, I got to be careful with because I'm not trying to make it too dark, but I'm trying to add a little contrast. So I'm going to use a little silver gray. Let's see if it does what I want it to do. Yep, it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. As far as color wise, it gave it that contrast. That was amazing. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I don't know what it was. There was something about a, a darker, I didn't want to use black because I felt like it would have been too much, but I felt like it's almost like a charcoal. Now watch, once I'm done like stirring these, I'm going to put them right next to this picture and I'll let you guys be the judge of this. Um, stir, stir, stir. And then these two colors. And let's just bring this in a little bit. All right. Look at that. Right? Okay, I think we got the colors. Now it's time to go ahead and pour. And don't mind the extra coasters over here is going to be a different project. Well, one of them is going to be that for the matching set. Uh, four project or four coasters. Usually with this, it's two coasters. But this is um, an example and a set for my cousin. So we're going to go ahead and start the project. Hopefully I don't bump this. This will be the last one because I'm going to have to stack it on top of that. But um, let's, I, I believe I should have enough. I think each coaster, 
takes three to four ounces. Um, these are a little bit deeper than the ones that came with this. So, and I think I've only used these once before, maybe twice. And I don't remember because it was a long time ago. So we're about to find out. Um, now, this is the going to be the fun part. The pour, right? So, I have a silicone mat right here underneath this silicone mat. Um, I usually don't like making messes because resin is a pain in the ass to um, clean. So, I'm just going to go ahead and... Do that. And then I like to keep stirring until I got really everything mixed well because there have been times where I thought I've mixed it really well and um, get little powder puffs, <laughs> like puffs of powder that surface during the curing process. And instead of it being mixed, it looks like little speckles. Um, kind of gives it character, but at the same time, not exactly what we're, we're aiming for, you know? So, I think what I really, really, really want to do, this might be a little bit interesting, so bear with me. Th this is the most important, is the creative process, because it can change, um, in order to achieve the look that you want. So, I want to be able to blend it into... A pattern of like orange on one side and teal on the other and then kind of ombre it in so bear with me let's see how it, this is going to be a process so in order to see if it works the way that I'm, I'm imagining it in my head I have to uh, let me turn on these turn on these resin makers Okay, I had a small delay because uh, it would have helped if I plugged in my one maker, huh? Uh, let's see. No. Turning this on. Alright, so. Let's get this started. Okay, what I was trying to do was, I want to, this is an extra coaster, guys, so just ignore it. And actually, I'm not going to put this in here. Um, I have to put a clear coat on another project, so I'm just going to add it, but I'm not going to include it in this video just because of demonstration purposes. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and try to go with, I'm going to start with this one. Actually, I'm going to change my glove because I have a hole in it, but bear with me. I'm going to start with this one. Technically, what I should do is start with this one that's over here. The wine caddy holder because it's the closest and only one on there. Um, but Also, it's important to have some kind of alcohol. So I have just normal rubbing alcohol. I've found this little distress spray or vaporizer at Joann's, but you can find it at Michael's. This helps for a lot of reasons. Bubbles, it also helps with um, ink cell pattern formations when it's curing. Um, and, well, just helping with cleaning, truthfully. It's also helpful to have some kind of, like, paper towel and alcohol so you can clean your molds if you find any like floating dust or hair on them. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I've cleaned these but there's always something so make sure you triple quadruple check before you actually start the pour. Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention the bubbles they're practically gone as you can see I'm sorry I'm like so out of frame but the bubbles are practically gone especially because once you start mixing the colors um, it starts forming its own pattern. And now look, this is the third one. Literally how clear that is. Like water. So we're going to go ahead and try with this one first. I kind of, I, I feel backwards. I feel like I should, there we go. It 
So right now I'm just pouring a little narrow, narrow, I don't know if you can see over there, but I just put a little bit of narrow clear on one side, and now I'm pouring the orange on the other. I'm going to go ahead and continue to pour. All right, and it's starting to fill and push the clear on one side. So now I'm going to go ahead and pour the blue before it con continues. So that was about three ounces, about an ounce, and well, probably about a half an ounce of the clear. Um, but I'm about to pour another half ounce right in the middle. And then, so one ounce, one ounce, and then now another ounce right here, right in the middle. And it's still not full, so I do believe each coaster is going to take four ounces. So this is going to take a little bit more than I anticipated. But... Again, creating a pattern is a little. It doesn't need, I only drizzled a little bit more orange on that. And I'm going to bring the camera over here in a second so you can kind of see how it form it, uh, form, formed, I can't talk, um, how it started to form. But I don't want it to be so, like, boring. So, watch, I'm going to show you what I mean by boring. Let's bring this over here. All right, so it's cool, but that's not the look that I'm going for. So let me turn this on. All right, and I'm going to take my little, I have this little clear stir thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and swirl these patterns a little bit. I think once I put the sticker in it all right that's already looking better and cooler I'm this I'm kind of working with I just want to shove some more blue into it now think at the bottom I don't know if you can see a little bit of clear through the bottom but it is going to resonate a very 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 cool pattern now that the fun thing is trying to match this particular pattern and the other coasters. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find my little mini torch because I have to blow some of these bubbles out. There are very tiny, let me see if I can, there are very tiny surface bubbles here and I already see um, something floating in it so I have my little tweezers. I'm going to go ahead and pluck that out. And then I'm going to go ahead and torch out some of these surface bubbles. Now it is on top of a resin cure, so it's supposed to help speed up the curing time. I'm going to keep it right in the middle, actually. It's probably the safest bet. Okay. I see one more tiny speck. Now... I don't know if you saw that just now. I kind of really like what I just did with that. What did I do with my clear stir? And I'm just, I'm leaving it for a second just so you can kind of see. I don't know if it's like focused, sorry. Um, I'm gonna bring some of this blue. Kind of make it look like waves, right? It's a dolphin after all. So I'm going to go ahead and create that kind of look. All right, now, carefully, I've never done this. I did see some surface bubbles that I just brought into it when I did that. So let me focus. There we go. I'm go ahead and take these surface bubbles out. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and create my layer. Beautiful, and it doesn't even touch. So now let's go ahead and shrink this back a little bit. I'm going to try to replicate this. Um, we do have to move this back a little bit, sorry. 
and I have to be very careful because I do have stuff on the bottom. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to most likely have to mix a couple more because I'm trying to add the caddy to it. And each coaster takes four ounces, which we've learned. This also, I believe, takes about four and a half to five ounces. So, and I've mixed 24 ounces. <laughs> but the way you'll see the comparison when we start to pour, you'll eventually need to mix more because you don't know exactly how one pattern is going to turn out or how much more of one you'll need than the other. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this. I only want to pour a little bit of clear in the middle. Oh, but wait, see right before I poured, I really did notice a small hair. But I don't want to press too hard now because I have the tray on the bottom. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and try this again. Now the clear, the only reason we're pouring a little bit of the clear in the middle is to help create that barrier of separation between the colors when I do start to pour the colors. So i got to be very diligent with this. Alright. Now I poured orange on the coaster last. I'm going to do blue on this one. Or teal or whatever you want to consider this color and I, I already like this resin cure because now that I've already poured one layer of this in here um, I can already tell that it's starting to help with taking the bubbles out of the formation of this so now we're going to take a little bit of orange Now it's already starting to pour and mix into the other side, so I'm going to let this sink in here because resin does sink if you slow pour it. Oh, I just poured it, and it's going to go over the side. Luckily, it's just going to drip into the other coaster, so I'm not mad at that. All right. We're going to go ahead and start with that. I want to see how much spilled over. Okay, not terrible. And guess what I'm going to do? Since that pour is nice, I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more clear. It's fun experimenting, trying to figure it out. All right. and then, but this time I'm just going to pour it literally directly. Alright, this. Now I'm going to do what I did to the other coaster. This is a part of resin which does take the process because while it's curing, it actually changes many patterns. And in order to keep them, like I don't know if any of any of you like ever paid attention to some of mine, but I, I do have some that the pore patterns shift into like the marble, that marble look. I'll sit there for an hour or two while it's forming and curing because it does shift patterns so what I'm doing is changing the direction of the way this is sitting to give it a different flow because the, I, I noticed how it's sitting a little heavier on one side than the other um, I want to add a little bit more um, blue here teal here so now that I've changed the way it's uh, presented I am gonna be a little bit more careful with how I'm pouring this but it just needs to be a little bit more leveled so I'm gonna just add I know it looks crazy and like I'm just pouring which kind of I am but um, I needed to do that for a reason because it was more full and more appearing brighter on one color than the other so now I'm just gonna kind of shift this Okay. 
Now that kind of looks satisfying to me. Um, let me bring this in a little bit. No. I don't know why. I feel like weight-wise, it's and I don't know if it's the net or, or not the net, but like the little basket that it's in. I'm trying to find an equal um, ratio of where it should be um, turned and weight-wise, because I feel like I see a little bit more, let's see if we can clear this, a little bit more weight on this side. Um, I almost feel like I want to put something under it, like a stick. Let's see. That helps. Alright, right, I'm going to back up. Show you my little messy table right now. Um, what I am going to do is go ahead and cover it. I need to pop out the bubbles real quick. So, let you see me pop some of these surface bubbles. Not sure how much of that you can see while I'm recording, but no, this is like super crucial. You never want to hold it in one spot for too long because you do have a potential of burning it and it turns into like this rubber feel. I don't really know how to describe that. All right, one thing I had to figure out, I don't know if it's going to be noticeable, but it's a learning process too. Um, the way this is, I feel like there's more heavy uh, resin area there. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's like a little pocket. It's hard because there's some clear, but there's a pocket here that's like in need of resin and same here. But right now, because of the weight of this, if I were to add resin, it would all go right to the middle. So I'm gonna wait for it to cure a little bit before I add a little bit of clear there and here to level it completely off. But now that I'm done with this, I have a lid, but before I put any lid on top of anything, I, again, I always make sure I wipe it down um, and I'm gonna go ahead and cover that and change my glove because apparently you broke through another one. Um, my hands are sweaty anyway, so it's giving me an opportunity to change that. Now, at this point, what I have left, I'll probably be able to fill two coasters, um, which is okay, because like I said, I, I had a feeling that I was going to need to mix some more, which is okay, but that's why I kept the colors out, because I knew, um, I knew exactly what I was going to be needing them for, so, all right. This whole time I thought I was recording. Oh my goodness.
Okay, so I made the coasters and I made the stickers, but I didn't like the white on them. Like, it didn't feel like they were anything, no matter how I tried to turn them, right? So, and I actually have them upside down, um, but I cut out 